and with me right now in real time is formerly Joanne Richards. Joanne, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic, and I hope I did not scare you by using that name. No, no, it's fine. I, I still use it in business, so it's fine. Yes, most yeah. people will recognize you as Joanne Richards, so I, I think will. it's <laughs> probably appropriate right now, and then we can get into everything that's uh, gone on the last several years. And yeah, Joanne, you haven't been here, yes, you haven't been here in quite a, quite a few years since uh, 2020, I believe was the last oh, time. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, back when things were really weird and things haven't stopped being weird uh, no. ever since. Had I moved yet when we talked? I don't think you have yet at that time. Oh, okay. If it was before July of that year, I had not moved. Yeah, this must have been somewhere in, in October, I believe. Oh, well, then I, I, I you probably I moved, did move. Okay. I moved out of California in July of 2020. Understood, understood. Yeah. And uh, Joanne, for, well, for those who don't know, you were married to Mark Richards. I was. That's right. And, uh, you know, we went over this. We, we had talked about it. We had known that your roommate at the time had a husband in prison. And that's kind of how these things sort of snowballed. Yeah, when, when he and I met, yeah, I had a roommate whose husband was in prison. Right. Absolutely. I recall. I know. <laughs> I remember. And uh, your friend said that she knew of a genuinely nice ex-military guy by the name of Mark Richards doing time at the same facility. Correct. And you two were introduced and um, you guys had quite the rapport. And then one thing led to another. You were doing all these conferences. You're talking to a lot of people. And um, what, what exactly happened, Joanne, if you don't mind me asking this question, I'm sure a lot of people out there listening right now are probably curious and thinking, okay, well, what happened? Well, how did this thing end? How did it end? Yes, ma'am. Huh. <laughs> well, it, it's, yeah. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting because it had nothing to do with, a little bit to do with the prison, but a, nothing to do with, you know, when I was speaking on the UFO circuit. And because I'm totally still into that and I totally believe he did all that. Um, and just, you know, co well, before COVID hit, before COVID hit, um, I just started looking at my life and how things were going and how I wanted to retire in the near future, because back then I was like nearing my mid sixties or I was in my mid sixties and I figured, Oh, I, you know, I don't want to work till I'm 90. And so I started bringing up stuff about, you know, it's like, how can we like restructure things? Cause I was paying for his house in California, you know, all the expenses of living there. And, um, and I said, you know, we need to think ahead and, and whatever. And, and, you know, let's, let's come up with a plan and also being very positive. And, and I also started bringing up things like, you know, married people will do. It's like, you know, um, there's there's things I'd like to see happen differently in our relationship, and it, long story short, that was never gonna take. That was never gonna happen. And um, the 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 restructuring of the funding of the house has still not happened. And um, I moved out of California because of COVID, because I there was no visiting at the prison for a whole year, actually, we did start seeing each other eventually, but um, the whole prison system was locked down and, you know, no visiting at all for a year. They eventually started um, video visits and then very limited, restricted uh, per in-person visits. And eventually they brought back the family visits where you could have some time alone in, in an apartment. Um, so things improved a little bit, but you know, it's like, I didn't, I had to isolate. I was isolated just like everybody else. And I was living in this big old creaky house. And uh, my daughter said, well, why don't you come up here and quarantine with us? And so I thought, oh, that sounds like a great idea. And so I, I moved to Oregon to be near family during COVID. And it's just kind of, it's like, well, I'm staying here. This is great. And the house was becoming a big burden for me. And um 
and then our relationship just kind of disintegrated so sad to say but that's life it is life. <laughs> and yeah ultimately that's the way the cookie crumbles at times and uh joanne do you regret that decision you made do i regret Terminating the marriage? No, no, not the marriage, but just just uh, getting involved with. Do uh, I? I, You know, no. Yes and no. Yes and no, because I I look at him as just like all my other ex husbands. I look at him as a teacher. So I learned lessons, and I learned a lot about myself, and I learned about things that I was newly interested in that I would have never found out had I not met him, not left the Mormon Church. You know, so it's like it, it, he put me on a trajectory, it put me on it, knowing him put me on a trajectory to better things for myself. And then having the time to look at what I wanted personally and relationship wise right. um, made me look at what I wanted and what was best for me. So uh, do I, I have some regrets about the way things happened or not? And it took me a long time to realize that you know, was not the best path for me, but it, it is what it is. And it, it's, I shouldn't say it served its time. It lasted as long as it needed to last. And then it was done. And he may not see it that way. And we don't even talk anymore, but you know, that's how I, I want to look at it. I don't want to look at it with um, anger and, and, you know, rage and all that. Cause that's just not good for me. But um, no, not at all. I mean, that is probably the yeah. worst thing really for anyone to want to, I go back in the past and uh, relive all that again and then just stay angry and stay in this weird <laughs> place in life. And a lot of people do that. People love to live in misery. Yeah, I don't. I don't. That's just not, that's not for me. That's and, not who you are. Um, yeah. You know, I, I've had to kind of relive it because I'm writing a book about it. Oh yeah. Are you? But, oh yeah. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah. And I, it's like, do I write the book or do I do a comedy routine? But um, I could do both. But I, yeah, I, I'm on book number two. I, I wrote one book during, well, I finished, I published it during COVID uh, in 2021 about uh, all the marriages and, and then how I got onto my path of, you know, having UFO sightings, paranormal experiences and learning about aliens and witches and fairies and all that cool stuff that is definitely a part of my life these days. So that was like how I changed my life in my forties and went on this cool path of woo. Um, you know, I should, and I don't take that lightly. I just, people relate to woo they, better than yeah, they, else, I, but... they identify with <laughs> yeah. the, the woo. So I, I totally get it. Now you're no longer Joanne Richards. Now you are Joanne Fawcett. That's my maiden name. So well, I'm proudly it taking it back Yeah, or going by that. And, um, yeah, it's funny because when he and I got married, I never officially told the Social Security office that I got married, I guess. And so I was always having to continually doing my taxes under Joanne Fawcett. <clears throat> so it's kind of convenient. You know, when we got divorced, I just, you know, told the divorce paper, you know, put it in the divorce papers that I'm going to go back to that. But I still use it for business because my clients know me as that. And um you know, the tax ID number for the, the business is under that. So it, it's all right. And I'm going to retire later this year. So nice. a lot of that's going away. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. You can enjoy retirement finally. And during your last conversation uh, with uh, Mark, was he <laughs> angry at, at you? Did he think you were betraying him by uh, ultimately <laughs> doing this? What was going on in his mind? I'm very curious to know. Uh, um. He's he, he's not happy, and, and we had a lot of angry moments. Oh and um, yeah, um, bless his heart. You know, he's he's an honorable military officer, and he's got some great stories. And um, and and in my book, I don't use his name, but you know, obviously people are going to put the dots together between the title of the book. And once I talk about, you know, I've been married seven times and this last one, you know, husband number seven, who the book is about, you know, is in prison. So people will figure it out. Um, he, he, this is hard to say on air cause you, you know him. Um, he's, he's a narcissist and he's, oh, you know, he's fully admits he's very selfish and, and that makes him a good military officer, I guess. Um, 
but he always wants things his way. So as long as for 20 some odd years, as long as I was just going along with the flow, doing my work, not making him mad, um, you know, kind of going along with his ideas and stuff. And a lot of his, his ideas were good. You know, I wouldn't have gotten onto the UFO speaking circuit had I not had this cool material to share. And, um, but if he's, if he's not getting his own way, he's not a very nice person. That kind of sounds like everybody, though, to be honest. Yeah, well, he gets really mean, and he got really mean in a lot of letters. Oh, he got and really so nasty. He, yeah, oh. yeah, because, yeah, I'm, I'm all of a sudden not a good wife. I'm not pretty enough because I wasn't thin. Oh, no. And, yeah, and um, I started my business in his house and then turned my back on his needs. I go, well, yeah, go. but my business was paying the bills. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it was a lot of meanness because I, I stopped making, well, it, I started thinking about myself and I started thinking about what I needed and wanted. And so, yes, for a certain extent, I was putting my needs first, finally. Um, and you know, the narcissist always wants it to be his way and all about the him and, um, and yes, you can be spoiled. And then the other extreme of that is you're a narcissist and he's, he's a classic narcissist. So, but I didn't, I didn't see that side of him until I left California. I mean, I, I knew he was selfish and I saw a couple of mean things, you know, in visiting, but it was usually, we kept things at a pretty even keel and, um, you know, <laughs> Understood. And how long did that until I left? <laughs> until you left. But Joanne, how long did that last? By the way, the the meanness. No, not the meanness. Just that oh, you two being the marriage. Marriage, yeah, the marriage. <laughs> uh, we courted for five years. We were married just a little over twenty. Oh, so wow. twenty five years. Yeah, a long time. It's kind of a long time. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Wow, I, I yeah. knew it was a long time, but not not exactly twenty it's years. So that is new to me. Relationship I've ever had. <laughs> wow, that is pretty wild. That yeah. you guys were an item for that long. Yeah, and I, I again, I, I, I do believe he's innocent of the crime that put him in prison. Understood. I do believe that he was involved with space stuff. That part, I never doubt. I never will. Um, you know, he can be very charming and very nice, and he's got great stories, and he's he's a fabulous historian, and he's got many good qualities. You just don't want to cross him understood understood and of course we are you know. talking about mark richards who was involved with top level military intelligence operations wow. that's that's what yeah. he is absolutely claiming and many including on world and off world contact and battles with various alien species and joanne you fully and firmly believe these stories i i would imagine I do, okay. I do, and I still do. You um, still do. I haven't been, yeah, I haven't been asked to speak at any UFO conferences, you know, especially during COVID, because most of them were were gone, not happening. Right. But um, I was allowed, or not allowed. I was asked to speak this last fall at a conference. Well, during COVID, I spoke at WisdomCon because now I'm I'm using all the lessons that I've learned. Um, to better myself. And it's like, oh, I have some insights that I can share with people. And and that went over very well. And and it's not just about Mark. It's like I've learned lessons through all the crappy marriages I've had. But then this last fall, I was asked to speak at a conference in Northern California called Mystical Minds Convention. Mm. And it was the speakers were, you know, shamans and psychics and paranormal people and UFO people and witchy people. So cool it was a people. lovely yeah. mix. And it's like, these are my people. And I, I w gave a talk because my, my focus now, besides talking about toxic relationships, is as far as my woo goes, it's like I've really embodied that um, humans especially if you're using magic and the fairy realm and even the alien realm, because they're very spiritual or many of them are. And, you know, to be part of this galactic community, you just like, we're all connected. And it's finally, it's like, oh yeah, we're, we're just as connected to the aliens as we are to the fairies and to the other humans. And it's just amazing to me. And I, I, I love talking about that kind of stuff. Very nice. Yeah. Very, very nice. And uh, since you left 
uh, that sort of scene momentarily and you have so you haven't been invited at all at, at any alien related conferences uh, joanne just the just the mystical minds because that okay. was a little bit alien related um and she'd been ha wanting to have me like for the first couple years that she did it and i don't know if i you know, for a while we were being harassed by an online journalist, so I stopped going and doing anything. And um, and then I think I didn't go another time just because of the, the drama that was happening in my life and I needed to sort that out. So um, so that was that was the first one that I've really been to that I got to speak at. Okay. And very I've been nice. I've been doing a lot of podcasts and I the podcasts have been a variety of the UFO and paranormal. And now it's a lot about toxic relationships, but I have been doing a lot of podcasts. So yes, I've still been speaking, just not at live conferences. Right, right. Understood, yeah. understood. My goodness, I, I just can't imagine. <laughs> a husband number seven, you said. I know, yeah. Joanne, I know. Why, I'm why right so, up there with Liz Taylor. <laughs> Joanne, why, why so many husbands? Well, that's a good question. Um, and my, my standard answer is I grew up in the 50s and the 60s with the whole leave it to beaver uh -huh. image of happy families and white picket fences and you get married forever. Yeah, this is what you, you wanted babies. then. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's the future and you wanted. And, and That is the picture yeah. I wanted. That's mm -hmm. not the picture I was dealt. And I was also, my family's not Mormon, but I was a Mormon for 30 years. Oh my God, so, Joanne, I forget all about the Mormon past. Yeah. Oh, so, Joanne. you know, it's like that that's also part of the picture. You you find Mr. Wright, you get married, you have lots of babies and everybody yeah. lives happily ever after. But nobody said, well, you should be talking about these kind of things as you're leading up to marriage. And we never, you know, important things. So you're on the same page. Um, what I realized now way too late is like, just because you go to the same church and you go and sit in a church service and you're doing your service you know, when you come home, that other person is often, well, mine, my other person was yeah. always a different person at home <laughs> than they were at church. And, and we weren't on the same page financially or parenting wise. And, you know, it's just like, Ooh, what did I do? Marriage is tough though. You know, marriage is very hard. Tough. And I had a daughter um, after marriage number two and her dad died. So it's like, I kept thinking, well, she needs a dad. She needs uh -huh. a dad. So I kept trying yeah. to find a dad and she goes, I didn't need a dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had my uncle who was a great male role model. And it's like, oh, if you'd been old enough to really tell me that I would have stopped. And, you know, she's, we've gotten over that, but it's just, it's amazing. I, I, she and I were so much better off between the, the husbands. It's like, we did fine together. And, you know, fortunately too, for me moving near her during COVID has yeah. given us the time to heal mm. any past wounds and really become close again. I'm, so I'm that's glad really to hear nice. that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm oh, glad we're you, great. yeah, I'm glad you have a strong connection now. Well, I'm sure you I always do. did, but I'm sure during that time, it pretty much increased uh, tenfold. Yeah, and it was it was interesting because she, and I think she and my sister were always trying to tell me that you know Mark was not the best choice. Yeah. And but just like some of my other husbands, I didn't listen to my mom either. So you know, it's like we were trying to shake you and get you to see the you know the this wasn't a good. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I didn't I wasn't listening, and because I, I thought I was fine, and um, but during COVID and when I kept complaining about having to pay for another tree falling or another sewer problem or this or that, you've got to get out of that house. And that, that it's like, Oh yeah, you're right. So I finally started listening and I started listening to my, my guides and you know, the intuition has become a lot stronger. So I, I try to listen more than I don't listen. And um, that's really helped me. <laughs> Absolutely. I yeah. can I can imagine, I, but I'm glad everything is uh, in working order with your family, and I'm sure they're yeah. relieved that you're no longer with uh, Mark. Well, and it's interesting because we're trying. It's like I'm still trying to untangle some of the drama. I, I'm working with, well, yeah, there's still this financial piece. His trust owes me some money, and I'm still trying to get it. And you know, I'm still trying to give some moral support to the other trustee and. And help her negotiate a lot of things and you know it's it's not easy and it's it uh, narcissists don't like to let you untangle yourself from their life <laughs> i've uh, i've realized that there's uh, lots of uh, strange people 
Uh, lots yeah. of strange stalkers. I want to just put that out there. That stalkers. Are, don't let these things go. You know, they keep re-emerging. They keep trying to harass me and all this oh, uh, nonsense. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah, it, it's amazing. Um, it really but I, is. I'm, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's like the book has, this new book has been very healing for me. And yes, I have to relive the crap as I write it and then rewrite it and look at it again and talk about it. But it's been very healing and it's, it's pulling or pushing me, whatever. It's like I'm being called also to um, try to help others and, and bring to light, you know, here's some signs of this kind of toxicity. And here's what I've done for myself. Even if you can't re leave the relationship, here's what I've done to help me survive. But I was able to leave. Um, right. But not everybody can leave because sometimes the narcissist is your best friend. Sometimes it's your parent. Sometimes it's your child, you know, or a work colleague or something. It's it's not always just your spouse or your romantic partner. But, um, you know, it's kind of like years ago when my daughter and I were being physically abused. I should have called the cops. I never did. I, I was frozen until I decided to leave. You were being physically abused, uh, Joanne. Uh, yeah, my daughter more than me, but yeah, uh, husband number three was very abusive. So, Ooh. yeah, very hands on. Yeah, I mean, and, and it, it's it's funny because I I I always feel compelled to say, well, he didn't beat us to a pulp, but it, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, one hit is that's enough. One hit too many. Right. And you know, my daughter was a toddler at the time, oh, and no. I should have I should have, well. I would have been in prison if I did that. But, That's true. Um, I should have called the cops, and I never did, and I should have. <laughs> yeah, you should have, uh, especially um, if I, that was going uh, yeah. on. But yes, I understand. Uh, but Joanne, yeah. you know, for those that are looking in the outside and they don't know you at all, and they just hear, no, they just hear something like uh, seven husbands, and <laughs> they say, well, <laughs> what they they say, well, what's going on with uh, Joanne? Is there an issue with her? Is she Probably. the problem? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it's okay, but you recognize that perhaps you also were a contributing factor to your problematic history. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting, um, and I'm not blaming anybody. And, you know, one thing my daughter pointed out, especially as I was writing the, the first book, is like, yeah. you know, Mom, you, you trusted that you would find love with the right person, and so you just kept trying. So, yes, there is that, because I do believe that love is a wonderful thing. I agree. I just, I didn't find the right person. And yeah, also, like, happens. with the Mormon church, you're not supposed to fool around before you get married, and you're not supposed to live together before you get married. And so you know, your hormones are raging. Yeah. And so you better get married. Um, and the other thing is, you know, I grew up with an alcoholic parent and an alcoholic grandparent and seeing my mom be codependent. So I just by osmosis became codependent. And, you know, I married one of my husbands was had substance abuse issues. And oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the liquor store and buy you alcohol, yeah. even though I'm a Mormon, and we don't right. do that. And, you know, and yes, I will let you invest that money that we're not supposed to invest that way, because I believe you and yeah, I'm stupid. And, um, and, and I don't believe I'm stupid now. But um, so yes, I had some issues, but I've been in therapy for you know, this whole time I've lived in Oregon and I've worked on myself. So I can honestly say I am a much better person and I, I'm, I'm setting boundaries and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to immerse myself in the, the silly online dating world. <laughs> it's like, I could tell you some horror stories, but it's like, I know what I want and I'm not afraid to say it and I'm not afraid to set some boundaries. And if I, um, in, I had a psychic tell me, it's like, I go, what's, what's my problem with all these dating? Because what sign are you? And I said, the Leo, he goes, well, you're intimidating them. And <laughs> I go, well, I'm not trying to intimidate them. I just, you know, I've let the Leo out and I'm more, not, not aggressive, but I'm more sure of what I want. We're and more forward, it, basically. Yes. I'm being more forward and I'm, I'm being more transparent and I'm a Leo um, myself, by the way. So I understand. Uh, okay. I get you. Good. Okay. Well, I, I had a, a, a coffee or tea date, you know, with this, this man the other day. Yeah. And it's like, um, I probably share with him some things he didn't want to hear. Oh, yeah. not, you, not about him. You, you opened up a little he, too much. Yeah. But he asked me questions. And so, oh, okay. you know, well, I just have to be it. my honest self. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, thank you for being so transparent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he asked for it. 
he did. So you know, it's I like, mean, well, how many times have you been married? Well, seven. Well, you yeah. know, it's you not know, like you're, it's not like you're gonna say, oh, well, I've never been married. Yeah, it's like, well, I, obviously, I well, no, I'm not obvious that I have. I can have kids without getting married, but yes, True. I have been married way more than I wanted to be. But you know, hey, man, hey, that's life. For those that are it, listening, it, and they're it like, it is what it is. They, you know, because you know, because you know, Joanne, people are, again, they're gonna be like, well, married seven times, what's going on? <laughs> But I mean, marriage is tough. And again, everyone does deserve to be happy and have that special someone waiting for them at right. home, really, or wherever. I agree. So I, I, I understand. I understand completely. And dating is very difficult. I mean, having a partner in this life <laughs> is pretty goddamn hard, Joanne. I know, I know. And I, you know, I. I, I look at my, my sister and her husband have been married 50, over 50 years now. Um, and yes, has it always been a bed of roses? No. Not at all. Do, do most of us see that? No. But, you know, we, we see that they have made it the long haul and they're still together and they're still happy. And, um, you know, it's like, oh, this is good. You know, life could be like this. And if nothing else, you're teaching me how to, to enjoy retirement when I get there because, oh, look, I can relax. Well, this will be fun. <laughs> But I mean, you know, it is possible. And um, like I was sharing with this guy I had tea with the other day, it's like, yeah. I don't really ever need to get married again. I don't need the piece of paper. You know, I'm no longer a Mormon. I just don't care. And I'm not having any more kids. You know, I don't care. Um, and I don't need that. It's like, do I actually have to do I need to live in the same house with them? I don't know that I do, but I don't know. You know, it would be nice to have a partner. Sure. Some somebody that really loves me and gets me, because I don't think I've ever really had that. Um, so yeah, I'm still willing to look around, but on these dating apps, it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, what and is I, I, what, what I is found that? a lot of fake people. Mm -hmm. Ah. I, I, you know? I'm very curious what that's been like for you. Um, so you've you met a number. Yeah, it's been horrible. <laughs> Tell me the worst one. I I, I got to hear. It. Okay, I, I've got a couple of them. Oh, um, good, uh, good. I love yeah, I love this. Uh, one one is, um, and and I knew this guy was probably iffy because on his dating profile, very nice looking guy lives over at the coast, but said he works for a cruise line. And you know, okay, I know that there's no cruise terminal where he lives so but but a lot of us work from home so i suppose you could work from anywhere it's like okay well that that's interesting so we started having some chats and then you know you're always warned don't get off the dating app until you're really ready to like have a phone call or a video call with this person but um he wanted to get on like facebook messenger so i said okay and um but as soon as we did, oh, I'm having trouble with my Facebook and they want to verify my identity. Can you do, be the person that does that? I go, absolutely not. Bye. And I immediately blocked him from my Facebook and blocked him like out of the dating app. And I might have reported him. But um, and then a couple of days later, my friends were saying, uh, did you send me this other Facebook friend request with like no picture? I go, absolutely not. And so that was one. And a lot of them are just not harmless, but um definitely fake profiles and it's like i'm i'm learning to if you have too many travel pictures and they just look so posed and and you say you're from there's a couple of places there's a city a really tiny town in the middle of washington that a lot of these weirdos use and one in oregon it's like there can't be that many of you in these towns because these <laughs> towns there, yeah. are so tiny in the middle of nowhere in Oregon and Washington. And then there were a couple of guys who on their profile looked like these outstanding white businessmen. And I have nothing against people of color. Or sure. any, you know, I've been married to a couple of black men and, you know, I, I'm not a racist, but if you're going to be white on your profile and you're going to say that you've done this and this or lived these places and we're having these chats that make it sound like you know what you're talking about oh can we communicate off of here and these two both said that and it's like okay that's interesting that you're using the same words and then we get on a phone call and they're clearly black men's voices and I'm not saying that because I'm a racist, because I'm not, but I've been married to a black man, so I know what so a black man's yeah, voice sounds know. like. Right. You know, I'm sorry, it sounds different than my voice. Um, and 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 then their their phone numbers were from different states. I go, well, okay, I could get that because I'm from California, so I still have my California area code. But it's like 
you've never told me you lived in Philadelphia, so don't have a Pennsylvania area code. And you've ne this one's never told me you lived in Montana, so don't have a Montana area code. And and it was like one of them kind of didn't know the script from the dating app. So it's like I would ask him questions to test him, and he couldn't answer me properly. And the other one must have figured that out. And you know, must it could have been the same two guys because this other guy I said, you know, I'm not. We're done. Well, what's the problem? I go. You, you don't even. You didn't even know what your profile said. Oh my. <laughs> and then the next guy, who wanted to talk to me. Um, and sounded very familiar to the other guy, but it's like he knew more of what the profile said. But I said, okay, you're, you're not who you say you are. And so this is done, you know, we're done. And especially because one, you know, and I had changed into my night clothes. And uh, so I was not going to get on a video call with this guy. And it's like, and he goes, well, do you want to do a video call? I go, no, you know, I've changed out of my work clothes. Oh, I don't mind. It's like, mm. well, I do. And we're yeah. not going there. Well, you know, well, how long would it take you to go there? It's like, Oh, no, no. <laughs> what, the first conversation, we're not talking about my pajamas. Yeah, that's a little much. Yeah, very yeah, it's strange. Like, okay, this is inappropriate, so bye. <laughs> yeah. It seems like some of these guys were obviously kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. And a pair, it's, it's like this, somebody has a full-time job out there putting out fake dating profiles. And I'm sure there are women that do the same thing, but it's like, if you tell me you're this and this and this, and you're from a foreign country... You know, this is how I'm spotting a lot of these things. And this one guy early on, he had some great travel pictures. And I go, oh, so where's this one from? Oh, it's in Milan, Italy. I'm thinking Milan is not on the ocean. And that looks like a key. You know, that looks like, like a breakwater type of, you know. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's like, sorry. Um, it could be just a fountain in the middle of the town, but I don't think so. You know, this is when my, my spidey sense, my intuition hit, clicks in, thankfully. Right. and. You know, now it's just, no, no, You no. might need to switch dating apps, Joanne. I'm on four. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know. There's weirdos on all of them. Um, I would imagine, and, yeah. There, there's some know, very strange had, people there. I've had, I've had three first in-person dates, and all three of them are not going anywhere, so. Oh, no. they, they yeah. You didn't like them that much. Well, no, the first one, it, it kind of got boring after a while. And then I have inside cats and he made it very clear that he doesn't do inside pets at all. So oh it's like, God. okay, get rid of them. No, nope, no problem. And we just kind of mutually knew without saying, you know, no, no second date here. The second, the next one, we had a lovely date. I thought we were making a connection and, um, we made plans to see each other the next weekend. And then when the next weekend rolled around, I totally got ghosted. It's like, no, no response. No, I changed my mind. No, nothing. It's like, well, that sucks. And, and, um, and then this, this guy, I just had a, a you know, a tea date with over the weekend. Um, it, it just, you could just tell it's like, well, this, the seven, seven marriages and the one in prison, I think threw him, threw me under the bus but um because he didn't mind the woo but you know so you just know but the prison thing got to him i think so and he's got teenage kids still living with him and i go yeah i don't want to raise teenagers oh no you don't want to go down that road <laughs> no i've got grandkids your kids age you know <laughs> yeah i hear you so you know it's just it's 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 just gonna take time and it, i know. mean you eventually will find someone i'm quite right. sure i mean uh -huh. it's yeah I'm, yeah, and I'm not in a huge hurry, so it's okay. That's right. You I know? mean, but that was one positive thing about Mark, if I can say if there was any yeah. positive thing was, you know, you could find them right where you left them. I <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I made you laugh, Joanne. I wasn't sure if that was yeah. going to bomb or not. I'm glad <laughs> no, you laughed. You're, you're fine. Well, it, you know, it's like, um, and he's, he's, um, he's worked his way through like the optical you know, to become a certified optician program at the prison. Not not that he needs more job skills, but it yeah. looks good if you ever get to go to parole board. Um, and and my the other trustee is going to be in California soon and is going to go meet with him to talk about, you know, things. And um, she goes, well, I got invited to his, his graduation. I go, oh, that's nice. I don't suppose I was invited. <laughs> because she goes, no. Right. I go, yeah, good, because I wouldn't go, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I don't anyway. think you would actually want to go. <laughs> But in, so, so, in terms yeah. of parole, um, will, will he be granted parole at any time? Do you, if, can you imagine? You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, his sentence is life without parole. That's what and, I mean. It's like, oh, well, I don't know. But things have been changing in California. At least they were. So um, if you can, 
there's two things. It's like you can apply to have your sentence commutated by the governor. Yeah. And then you would do, you know, then then they would change it to like 25 to life and you could start having parole hearings. I think he's tried that. And I don't know if they just, you know, ignored it or never, you know, moved it up the ladder. Um, but that hasn't happened. And then sometimes laws come up in front of the legislature that we had always hoped would apply to, you know, especially like if you're old and you've been in prison this long, you know, let's get you out of here. If you're old and you've got a lot of medical problems, let's get you out of here. They're passing that for people who, you know, might have 25 to life, but not yet for lifers. So even though a lot of lifers who are old and are never going to do anything again, uh, they're just, they won't, don't want to let out. And those are the most expensive inmates, you know, those yeah. cost. He's probably costing the state at least a hundred grand a year. Damn. Yeah, because he's old. I mean, he's seventy. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's seventy, and he's got some health issues, and he's just you know, it's it's cost a lot of money to have those old guys in prison. I I agree. I agree. <laughs> so, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I I still am in touch with a few of our mutual friends that are there that I met because of him. And, him yeah. Um, not a lot, but um, um, he and I. I, I saw him last time in person. It's been almost a year, April, April of last year. And then we had a couple of texts after that as we were negotiating the divorce and things like that. And, you know, so. And for yeah, those. But I, uh, I don't for, talk to him at all. You now. don't talk to him at all. Okay. And yeah. Joanne, I got to ask you, what, what sure. was, I, I hope you don't take offense to this, but what was appealing to you to actually, you know. Be with it, him? Yeah. Be with him. You know, he's behind bars. Well, Again, by that time, I'd already been married six times. So um, I, I don't know where I'm going with that. So it's like, yeah, it's, I met this really smart guy, Mark, and he is really smart and he's got fascinating stories and he knows so much about history as if he lived, and he's probably had many past lives in, in all these different eras that he was talking to me about, but he just knows history so well that he can spout it as if he was there. Um, so that that was always fascinating and he's been you know around the world with with the military and you know largely with his family they they traveled or they you know lived they were stationed his dad was in the military so they were stationed in many places and then just learning about space and his 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 brain power is amazing you were he's captivated very smart. you were very I was captivated cap I yes hear you. i was okay. captivated I and for a long time it seemed fine um it just, you know, I got older and started looking at, I'm never going to be able to retire. And there's some of my needs. That you are know, not being fulfilled. Yeah. Not being fulfilled. You know, it's like everything, it has to be his agenda first and then maybe mine. And it's yeah. like when I wrote my first book, um, you know, some letters when we were getting along, oh, you know, good for you for your book. You know, well done. It's like a nice little read. It's like, uh-huh. And then later I would say, you know, well, why didn't you support my book more? Well, because it wasn't good timing for me. And it, mm. it kind of made me look like one of your other losers. I go, you got three chapters that treated you very nicely in that book. I mean, one of the chapters was just the, the logistics of being a prison wife and what that was like. But, you know, that's not always a bed of roses. So I just laid it out realistically. And um, I don't know if he didn't like that or not, but I, it's like you you did not come off in that book as a loser you yes you were number seven so that's on me but um you know i didn't make you out to be a loser in that book and you weren't mean to me well you weren't you weren't mean to me when i was writing that book and there was only a couple times before that where he'd shown some anger but um he keeps it very controlled when he's in a public situation understood and i'm sure that will satisfy the those curious and i, I heard a meow <laughs> in the background i think the, yes, he's he woke up. He woke up. Yeah, it's okay, baby. It's okay. His sister's now asleep. He's awake. Is he it's next like, to Mom, you? I'm awake. <laughs> do, do you have a feline next to you at all? Uh, no, she sister is on the floor, and he is like at my feet, is telling me hello. I'm awake, and you probably should feed me. You could grab but, him and, and and let him say hi to us here. Oh, yeah, you could do, do you it. Want to come up here? Yeah, look, come here. we we need to see this cat. Okay, come here. Let me. Oh, hang on. Uh oh. She's reaching down and I'm going to show us the beautiful feline in a moment here, ladies and gentlemen, a world's first here on this program. And there he is. Winston. It's Winston. Winston. Look at that guy. Hey, hello. It's a nice, hello. 
tuxedo cat there. I love that. Yes. And his sister is a tortoise. So, you know, they're, they're twins, but they don't look at all alike. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, I, I do appreciate you sharing. Yeah. yeah the, he doesn't like to here. be held, but you know, it's okay. Yeah. Some cats, you know, they don't like that. Um, but Joanne, you know, I'm glad you are opening up here and telling us about your, your story, your trials and tribulations rather. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because, um, it's like, I, it's not like I'm trying to turn people against Mark. Oh, I'm trying to bring light to the, the problem of people being narcissists and trying to deal with that in their lives. And, and I don't know how he found out that I was writing a book about him. Cause I certainly didn't tell him and all the names are changed except now we're on air talking about and his, he, but, and you know, he whatever. Knew. I wonder how he found out. I don't know, but, um, I don't know because but it's interesting because he told the other trustee, she's writing a scathing book about me. I said, uh, well, yes, it is scathing, but the truth hurts. Um, so a lot of times there were staff people that seemed to, to monitor my public speaking. So um, they could have heard about it. You know, they might have listened to a podcast. I know uh, Carrie Cassidy found out about it and she's, you know, had mentioned that it wasn't going to be a very nice book about him. So I don't I don't remember telling her either. But, you know, it, it doesn't matter. And am I going to send him a copy? No. <laughs> Carrie's um, a very uh, strange woman, by the way. She and I got along, and we hardly talk either. Um, so My interactions with her haven't been quite uh, pleasant, so I, I oh, just I'm just kind of like, well, I don't know what's going on with her, but that's a I'm whole other issue. You know, but she, she, she and I disagree on certain political things, so we'll just leave it at that. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> yeah so, so people yeah. can believe whatever they want um, right about anything right but yeah we'll just leave that there um but anywho joanne again i, I mean I, i'm glad you are making this book uh, i find it quite interesting i would definitely love to read it once you have that out there book number uh, the, it, the second one coming out it's yeah. It, the the first one is called Midlife Magic, and it's by Joanne Richards. The second one, which should be out in, I think the ebook will be out in June, and the paperback will be out in in um, July. And I'm working with a a publisher, and it's called The Prince Was Wrong, Leaving the Narcissist Behind, because Mark's nickname is the Prince. Oh, the so. Prince, right? That's right. That's right. I rem <laughs> I remember now. Yes, the Prince. <laughs> You know, Joanne, so, I, I don't. I, I refuse to call any grown man prince, king, uh, and and women too, goddess, queen. Right. Yeah, I, I'm not going to ever say that about anyone. No, it's That's okay. Crazy. And I, um, I'm not sure. You know, in, in his German heritage, his his line way back when they were a German princedom. Mm. Um, the family were German princes, and yeah. so you know, maybe that's why it's it's either that or it's because he thinks he's above everybody else, but um you know, whatever. But the book is called The Prince Was Wrong, Leaving the Narcissist Behind, and it will be by Joanne Fawcett. I was going to do a pen name. I had one all picked out. And then, you know, people empowered me to say, just use your name. It's like, yeah. okay. Joanne, I, I like Joanne Fawcett. Thank you. I do too. There's a great <laughs> ring to it. Yeah, I, I dig it. I think this, it's, I think it's really cool. And, you know, I'm looking very forward to the book. Yeah, I and I have, a, um, if I can plug it, I have yeah. a new website's being built, joannefawcett.com, and it's not quite done yet, but people could go on there and at least sign up for the email list um, if they want. That part's ready. <laughs> nice. And Joanne, just for the record, you know, I've been accused of being a narcissist myself. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I've heard that a time or two. <laughs> Only by uh, only by uh, women that are very angry with me, though. I see. Well, you know, and there's there's, and and again, I think um, there's like a. Uh, what do you want to call it? There's actually a syndrome, of you know, and you can actually be diagnosed as being a, a narcissist. Sometimes people just use the term loosely for somebody who's very selfish. And I don't know you well enough. I would never call you that because I don't know you. I wouldn't call myself um, that either. I think that is insane, yeah. to be honest with you. But I think it's you. A, you know, a very loose term that a lot of people use for somebody who's selfish. Um, I, I would have I, to imagine when, when I was called these things, it was just a projection of the other party, to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. I am not a narcissist at all. I was going to uh, say, I've talked to you a few times now and you're not. So. No. And um, But I, I didn't know the term either until I saw... 
a sign for the person who, you know, like a sandwich board sign for the person who's going to become my therapist. Right. And she specializes in that. It's like, oh, that's what this is called. <laughs> that's right. But here's the thing. I, I have learned, though, from everyone's uh, take on me. I've learned that I, I, I do need improvement. And that that's all I can do, really. And I've been trying to live my life that way, one day at a time, improve myself yeah. and others around me as much as I can. You know, that's all, that's all we can do. We can only work on ourselves. Right. And the more you work on yourself and create the best life for you, um, you know, you're going to attract like people, hopefully. Because I think I'm in a much better place than I've ever been before. I think you and are that, too, by the way. That, yeah, thank you. That's the kind of person I want to attract. I want to attract somebody who's on the same spiritual plane as me and somebody who doesn't see me as a weirdo, you know, and is okay with me writing various books and, you know, just, and I'm, I'm super in tune with nature. You know, I'm a witch and I yeah. just, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a tree hugger. I, I love walking and talking to the birds and the trees and the flowers and everything that's out there. And, you know, I need somebody in my life who is either the same way or who totally gets it and appreciate that about me because we're going to get along so much better. That's right. You, then, you need a survivalist type of man, I would imagine. <laughs> you need someone that's in there. I do. <laughs> that's who we need to get you uh, hooked up with, uh, Joanne, in my opinion. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I posted, I posted, I finally, cause I get so tired of these dating apps. And I finally said, I was talking to a, a woman and a, a colleague and she's like, you know, do you want me to post, post your dating app on my um, Facebook to my, my friends and stuff? And I go, Oh, I don't know. And she goes, and then I said, well, I kind of as a joke, but not a joke. It's like, well, I'm going to elaborate on my add stuff to my dating profile because I was not putting how much woo I do on the dating profile. And I didn't put, um, you know, that I'd been married a million times and this and that. And it's like, she goes, just put it all in there. So I added all this stuff and actually posted it to my Facebook friends. Say, hey, who wants to play matchmaker? <laughs> you know, so no, nobody's come forward with anybody yet. But again, I'm in no hurry and I've got this book to finish. So yeah, don't it's rush like, yourself. It's called divine right timing. Divine, yeah, that's the right words. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. And I'll, you know, I, I will... Be patient. <laughs> yes, just be patient and the right guy will come along. But again, you definitely yeah. want to hang out with a lot of uh, survivalist people that go uh, on trails and hiking. We, You need someone that's uh, totally down with the outdoors. Someone that's also I a agree. hippie. I agree. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you know, you know what you want and what you need. So I do. You don't need me to tell you that. I uh, do. Absolutely. Well, thank you for thank you for recognizing that. Oh yeah, and Joanna, in in terms of the whole UFO uh, and alien thing or UAP thing now, that's they like to call it. I, I hate that term UAP. By the way, I like saying UFO oh, or flying yeah. saucer. I'd love that. I'm still calling them UFOs. I'm with I, you though. Yeah. I'm old school. That's what I know. Me I've too. had my own UFO sightings. You That's know, right. That kind of stuff. And yeah. I, I, I need to scratch your head here a little bit here and sure. ask you what your thoughts and opinions are with all this uh, hoopla that's been going on in terms of UAPs now and the government being so involved, and even though they've always been involved, <laughs> you know, we were getting all this sort of like, uh, I guess, light disclosure of sorts. And I, I'm curious what you think of all this. Well, it, it's funny because, again, the grassroots people we've been working on disclosure for years. So it's, it's nothing new to us. And I loved, it was like maybe the, the year before COVID shut everything down, I was speaking at a conference in Nevada and that's when those cool Navy guys first started, you know, they were starting to come out and speak publicly about that TikTok incident. Right. And so I, I, I got to meet them and they were so wonderful. And um, so yeah, the government is slowly starting to admit a few things, but it's like they've always known this was happening and they just haven't been allowed to really talk about it. So they they really haven't they, and they haven't really disclosed anything that most of us, you know, a lot of us didn't already know. Um so it's just I kind of and, and I did I listen to any congressional hearings? No. Um cuz they're not what are they saying that's new? They're not saying yeah, that's, anything that's new. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. None of it is new. We've all heard no. these stories that they're regurgitating. And and again, I, I 
the the other good thing about being married to Mark is like I was kind of in the inside loop because he still has connection. So I was hearing about current stuff that was happening. And it's like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. And this is good. And, and getting the military, you know, a lot of the things I was speaking on was older events, but it was still from the military perspective. So I kind of felt like I not knew more than everybody else, but I, I felt like I was on more, kind of a different inside yeah. track than some of the other speakers. So, but I'm not now. So I, you know, out of the loop. Out of but, the, yeah, the outsider. But so, you know, I just, I kind of go along and, and I listen to what people are saying. But again, to me, it's nothing new. So you're not impressed, um, in other words. You, I'm not impressed. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with you. I'm not ex exactly impressed by any of it. It's been a bit of a headache for those that have been following along. Uh, for you know anyone who's been into uh, ufology as long as both of us probably have, it, it does get kind of frustrating to see all this back and forth. The government is going to do this and that, and then right. they don't do this or that, and it's more suppression that's going on. I, I really don't know what the end game is. Well, and you know the the interesting thing with COVID because that wasn't totally just a random virus thing that happened, and um. It was manipulated. But the other thing is that slowed down disclosure because we had many alien allies who wanted to start pushing forward in, in a good way disclosure and wanted to be more open. And then they were affected by COVID as much as we were. And they a lot of them have to leave the planet. But, um, you know, I've always said, I just want us to all get along. And I, I've always wanted, especially after I saw this property in England, it's like, I want a big house. I want a big field where their ships can land. I want a vortex where they can pop in. Yeah. I want to be able to have tea and just sit around and talk like we're old friends. And I still want that. And I still think it's possible. Um, and, and again, especially during COVID and with all these wars that keep popping up and stuff, it's like, our alien allies who want to help us, you know, they want to help us, but not have to come in crashing and in a very dramatic, awful way to help save us, um, you know, from the, the negative aliens who might be working with that government, you know, they, they would have to come in and very dramatically show themselves if they were trying to help help us yeah um and that's not the way they want to do it they, they would like to do it on more friendly terms like you know show up at the white house and say hey how are you um so you know covid put a, a wrench in in all that in dis in, in, yeah in disclosure on both sides so that's a, a bad thing <laughs> so it's interesting you say that because uh, some people in the pentagon some pentagon insiders some of the whistleblower folks they're saying that there are uh, multiple factions of aliens, some that work with the government, some that don't, mm -hmm. some that are more mm -hmm. controlling than others. I'm just wondering, you know, we, we all want to do the right thing. We all want the best right. for uh, us, all of us here globally. We would love everyone to be on an even playing field. We would love everyone to be prosperous and have nice things in life. Yet there's a, a group of people out there that don't want that for humanity. And right. And there's aliens who don't want that for humanity. And right. I'm just wondering, have we lost completely already? Is there any hope in any of this shit, uh, Joanne? Sorry for using the, that. that oh, language, no, 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 no. I'm just um, trying to be realistic. Here I, I hope you. I hope we haven't lost. And again, that's the, the one downside to not talking to Mark, because I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, the, I talked a lot about the raptors as I when I was speaking over oh, yeah. the years. The raptors. Because st they still work with. They still work with the the especially the U.S. and you know other human militaries um, that are our allies to help us and to pr help protect us and help help us fight our enemies and um, and on the other side of that there's other alien species who work with the enemy governments and and you know want to you know make us slaves or want to take over and um, don't want good things for us the the raptors I still believe that they want um, good things for us and they want to work with us and they, they feel that that's still a positive road for them to follow. So, um, I, I can't, and again, you know, the sad thing is if, if, if we allow, you know, if we're in such a bad state that our enemies, you know, there's no hope for us then to protect the planet, 
the raptors would have the ability to just like gas us all you know if we're about to destroy the planet just so that one side you know doesn't win um then it might be time for the raptors to come in and you know wipe us all out but because their concern is the planet not necessarily us you know they're willing to work with certain humans but they're not willing to lose the planet yes and also you were hearing well not you directly but all of us were hearing uh pentagon insiders also saying that some of these things uh are, are not i well i was gonna say they're not et they're demonic they're demons of sorts um what what's your take on uh, these comments now i i you know people have said that when, years ago when i was doing talks he was yeah. like oh you're talking about reptilians they're all demonic I go, you know alien no you've got m hundreds of species of aliens some are very friendly some want to work with us some want to help us others not so friendly others don't want good things for us so it's just like humans you've got good ones and bad ones um so and and for me it's not a matter of demonic or angelic you know religion doesn't play a part of it you've got some alien species that are so f and you have to realize that they're all older than us their civilizations are all older than us but you know some are very spiritual and i've learned a lot from them and um you know one of my spirit guides is a is a raptor sorceress so you know i i highly respect them so it's like it's it's not a matter of being demonic yes yeah, some of them are very negative and and want to destroy us but um i i don't let the whole religious side come in and it's it's not a matter of christianity or religion to me at all it seems like a lot of stuff that's in the bible a lot of stuff that was written down it, it almost is extraterrestrial a lot of sound, it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there, mm -hmm. there are certain hints in there, you know, and there's certain hints. It's like, oh yeah, that is a a fly, a UAP. They're yeah. talking about a you know, fly a spacecraft, and yeah, that that's in there. And you you look at those, um, like oh, Ezekiel's wheel for yeah, Ezekiel's wheel is another great example of it. Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So it's just like, again, and and I'm no longer Christian, so I don't mind <laughs> talking about saying it. that yeah. a lot of that is hooey. So. That's okay. It's just it's stories. It's it's their the way to explain things. Right. And, and and I love you know you see cave art. And it's like clearly spa people in spacesuits. And you look at um like medieval or Renaissance era paintings. And yeah. clearly there's a spaceship right up there. And the, the it's in there. It's like so if that painter from the Middle Ages didn't see it, why would it know to paint it? I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And it's like why would these ancient people carve this being like this cat looking like a very tall cat standing upright if it hadn't seen the alien creature that looks just like it that's right because its house cat would not have done that <laughs> right right <laughs> it'd be uh, eating everything really um but joanne i'm glad to know that everything is is looking good for you so far i mean you, you're, you have you. all your work ahead of you plenty of things to look forward to i'm sure you'll be doing uh, more conferences soon about all these uh, experiences you've had and i do and mm -hmm. i you know it's like i it's like I, i'm going not in two directions because it's all connected for me i want to help people because i i'm you know the other thing is you you want your your life to be you know, not subservient but to serve others instead of just serving yourself so yeah. I, i'm very my life has always been based on service. I just need to do it in a positive way so that I'm not feeling like a doormat. So I want to help others still learn about aliens, especially the good stuff and our connection. And I want to help others, you know, with toxic relationships, because then they'll be more in tune to talk about aliens. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, Joanna, I'd love asking this question to all of my sure. guests when they appear on this program. And I just want to ask you this one as well. Uh, Joanne, do you consider yourself a good person? Yes, I do. I think I'm a very good person. You know, I'm not going to say I'm a good person or a bad person. I think I'm still trying to learn and improve myself in every facet imaginable. And I think I'm trying, I'm trying to be, to get there. And I think I'm almost there. Um, I've been improving well, it's, myself. It's a process. Yeah. You know, it's it's not going to, yeah, it, it's a, you don't just suddenly arrive. You, you're, it's still a process. I still have things to work on. And, you know, it's like, again, when people ask me, are you a good witch or a bad witch? I go, well, I don't do black magic. Never do. But 
Do I have an occasional thought that I want something to happen to that person? Sure. Sure. Yeah. But that does that doesn't mean I dwell on it, and I'm certainly not going to do a spell to make anything happen bad to them. So. Very, very nice. I'm, well, I'm glad to know. <laughs> I'm glad to know that you don't have any voodoo dolls of any any of your no, ex husbands. No, 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 that's not me. No, no. You're like so, maybe I'm, a couple I'm more years about ago. Protection and good okay, things good. happening in people's <laughs> lives. <laughs> I'm glad that you feel that way, Joanne, because I'm sure yeah. it would have been very easy for you to turn and then maybe um, bring out the voodoo dolls. It, it it it's a fine line, and sometimes people practice both sides. I just choose not to. I hear you. I mean, you're always going to be the bad guy in someone's story, no matter True. if you were good. <laughs> that, we're all the antagonist in someone's story. That's what I've learned in life. You know, I'm always going to be the bad person in someone's life. I'm I'll always be looked at like a lesser subhuman rather. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you listen to the journalist that used to harass us, I'm a horrible person. And you're a terrible woman. You I'm a terrible woman and I'm a black widow and I married all these people for their veterans benefits and it's like blah 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 because I never got any except for the one that I did and because he died. Yeah. You know. That's understandable. <laughs> you know. And I had his kid, so yeah. we, we deserved the money. But, I mean it's um, a it's a good trade off. Yeah. But again, I, I'm on a trajectory for good things and helping other people and being a good example and and all that good stuff. Very nice, I'm and, trying, um, yeah. <laughs> Joanne, I could easily talk to you even longer here. I feel like I talk to a lot of people even longer. Uh, but Joanne, I, I mean, I want to respect your time. And if there's anything else you have not got a chance to mention or talk about here, I would love for you to just spill it out right now. And now I would just say, um, you know, thanks for listening, and and everybody have an open mind and and know that it's it's never too late to change or improve your life especially if you you know sense something's not going well for you and you know if you if you feel so inclined sign up for my email list if you think you might want to be a beta reader for the new book great you know it'll be out in early summer so please watch for it and and i'm if you google my name i'm on a lot of podcasts if you want to hear more about toxic relationships in general so um, and if you want to talk about aliens, I'm on those too. So just if, if you have any questions, you know, you just contact me. Yeah, a variety of topics are open for discussion yeah. uh, with uh, Joanne if anybody wants that. But yeah, another piece of advice I would uh, give to anyone out there listening is if you are in a relationship that you don't you really like, it's a little rocky, get out. Don't just stay there. Right. That's Especially if you're, in, if you're in harm's way. Right. Absolutely. Get well, out sooner than later. Absolutely. And everyone can find your books over at Amazon.com or on your website, I imagine. The the first book, well, the first book is everywhere, and the website for that is dragonhillbooks.net. Um my my new book will be on Amazon and all that good stuff. And my website for that is joannefawcett.com. Very nice. Once again, Joanne, I really appreciate you being here and sharing sure. all this with us. And we'll Definitely have to bring you back on here again. Maybe even do it live. Yeah, we'll do it live next time. Oh, that'd be fun. We could yeah. ans answer questions. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, that'd yes. That'd be great. Absolutely. Good. Once again, thank you, Joanne, for being a part of the program. I will see you on the other side. Thank you. <laughs>